Hi, I'm Alexa Ray Korea, and this is the Game Maker's Notebook. I am incredibly lucky to have been able to do an on-camera interview and a recording for this podcast with Samantha Bayart, the voice of Carlac in Baldur's Gate 3. I cannot, I don't want to say a lot about what we talked about because I feel very transformed personally by this conversation. Samantha is such an incredible human being, an incredible performer. We talked about, you know, struggles getting into the industry and the way it is right now and sort of the way that um, working here can, can be transformative, but also parts of it that I think still need some work and attention from, from our side. Uh, I feel ready to jump into action after talking with them. And I just, I cannot feel more lucky to have gotten to get this time with them. So please enjoy. Now it is time for you to join the others and complete our destiny. Wait till you see Baldur's Gate. You'll never want to leave. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Samantha Bayart. We're here. Thank you for being here. I'm really excited to interview you. I have this I have loads and loads Bless of questions. Heart. I've been looking forward to this for so long. Um, I want to just jump right into it. First question, starting at the beginning, the beginning of all things, how did you get here today? Like, what was the path from where you were to where you are now, talking with me, Dice Awards, Carlac? Yeah. Um, so I had a very <laughs> traditional actor training. Um, uh, and I graduated into the second once in a lifetime um, recession. It was around oh, 2009. Yep. I remember that. And then the career did this for a very long time and then it did this in the last year <laughs> and that's what's happened it's the luck of the draw it's the luck of getting a character to portray a character like that and the luck of um a game that was as big as it was because it's about 10 times bigger than we we're expecting so i knew it was a good amazing character um but i didn't think this many people would be aware <laughs> why not because it was a, a smaller game it wasn't i don't think it was planned to be like a mainstream game the reason i, I, I can tell you this is because um that very first weekend on steam um, uh, Sven from Larian tweeted something along the lines of we've, we've told our guys on the West Coast who work on the servers to expect about 100,000 concurrent players. We had 800,000 concurrent players that first, first yeah. weekend and it went up the next, which is kind of unusual for Steam. Yes. <laughs> and then you've got all the console stuff and then you had, so you had PS5 and then months later you had the Xbox. So it's just been waves yeah. and waves and waves of this. Um, I thought it would be about a month of hype. And then it would die down. <laughs> We're about six months in now. Save me. <laughs> Still going. Still There's going. Mods. I think yeah. I saw a mod recently that was like, uh, someone made a mod where everyone's like a fairy now. You can have fairy makeup sure. and fairy wings. And <laughs> somebody put a, I saw a cowboy hat on someone. At I some think point. that's just in the game. Oh, okay. The cowboy Never hat. Mind. No, no, everyone looks great in it. Damn. I, I, it's a magical I need cowboy to, hat from that d and I love it. I love it. I need to jump back into it. Um, I played a lot of it, a lot of it last year when, when it came out. I remember talking to, you were saying the expectation that this was not going to take off. I have a lot of friends in media and stuff like that. And they were saying that when they were planning, like when you plan out coverage for major game releases, everyone was kind of getting ready. Like, oh, Final Fantasy came out and then all the fall ones came out and then Baldur's Gate came out and the player base just went crazy. And so there was kind of this like minor scramble to be like, wait a minute, like we need to cover this game. And I just remember opening my TikTok and like hearing you, it was you. I would, I would open my TikTok and like, there you'd be like, how do you. Me, out of context. Well, not <laughs> in, like in very, you, you, very but short like, videos. But like you, yeah, like, yeah, hear, like yeah. hear, seeing Carlac and hearing you talk and everything and playing the game and whatnot. Um, that's gotta be weird. 
Well, I'm not, I'm not, I mean, my, my void of choice to scream into is Twitter. So I'm not uh. so au fait with, um, with TikTok. But um, there seemed to be an arms race to get the entire plot of the game online in the first couple of weeks, which benefited me. <laughs> and I don't think anyone else. So, you know, it benefits the actor to see how it, it all comes out in the wash. But I'm not sure it was great for, for people who are innocently browsing the internet, coming across, you know, entire endings and things like that. Um, but what's been great about about it is it sort of be gone beyond the memification as it were because um obviously certain scenes were getting shown a lot and then as people and this is for all of the origin and um uh, supporting companion characters is, is people started discovering all the stuff that wasn't coming out in in the sort of regular playthroughs yep. um yeah there's so much randomness to it and uh I, I get, because it's lasted so long if it lasted a month we would have just been a few memes and there would have been yeah. stereotypes about it but the characters have so much depth and uh yeah i just can't imagine what that algorithm looks like it's a terrifying prospect as a narrative designer in the industry mm -hmm. i enjoy <laughs> that there are so many edge cases accounted for yes. and small little moments to me as a player that brings me so much joy as a dev, I am mildly horrified and also excited at the prospect of everyone now saying, okay, well, how can we create a narrative system like Baldur's Gate? Yeah. How can we create these moments like this? And I think as long as it's done with humans, I'm all for it. Yes. Also <laughs> pro-human. I'm very pro-human. Pro-human here. Yeah. I have some <laughs> very, very strong thoughts Let's about do that. it. Let's go there. Um, I'm sure lots of people do, will agree with us. How do you, okay, what is your take on the whole a, like AI stuff? Like the, 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 the thing. Well, I think that the rule with capitalism is line must go up at the end of the year. So if, if it sort of doesn't go beyond that, but I feel that a lot of uh, uh, six month pro proposals have been made and they will be followed through. And I think it will, my prediction is it will, it will fall over. I think, I think the, there's enough players that don't want that sort of content. So either it will crash and burn quite significantly maybe for a major thing that tries it or it'll be a scandal because they didn't let anyone know we've seen a few of these already happen with graphics online yeah. where they sort of go well ai didn't catch the ai <laughs> and <they> go, <laughs> yeah so i think the problem there is um yeah so i think i think in the long term it will fail but in the short we're kind of out of a job for a bit but then you've also got the, the all the speculation coming about the fact that everyone over employed during lockdown look everyone's playing games this is the new future this is what we'll all be doing yeah and so that with the ai is decimating we're more than decimating the industry it'll I'm, come through it will come through it has to i think people really love human made games so that, if, if there was an argument for one i think Baldur's gate 3 would would have been that this last year yes uh, i just think there's a bit of road to go before we get consensus on that yeah are you seeing on, on your end are you seeing a lot of like a AI replacement or like your peers like um I've seen in the UK someone was asked to sign their rights away at audition level Ooh. so you've not even got the job or the money in yeah oh mm. oh I don't <laughs> why don't you digest that I don't I don't like like that um I know that there's a like again we're games industry so it's like inno innovate or die but I do think there is like that's like one of the things we can't replace. We can't replace humans. We can't. I always thought the point of technology was so we could live in a utopia where we didn't have to work, not be ground into the earth slowly over. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was hoping we would all be be rich with time and yeah. resources rather than this, which is coming. I was really hoping to be obliterated by the sun expanding into our orbit, not being ground into the earth. That was what I was banking on. Oh, yeah, fair. If we do, <laughs> would you rather? <laughs> I don't want to get obliterated Could by a star. Could we just do like, with, with, yeah, with, like nature, it'd be a really pretty way to go out. Like another poetic. human wanting to make line go up at the end of the year is yeah. a bit sad. Chosen, chosen capitalism. Also, <laughs> going, going back to um, the idea of the pandemic, we were all inside, like, that big gaming boon people that I people that I know who have never played a game in their life were like I'm going to pick up fire emblem I'm gonna mm -hmm. buy a switch like I'm gonna play something and it brought them kind of into this community and I got all those calls that were like oh so this is what you do yes um <laughs> but I just think that the discovery that was made um when we could not interact with other humans that having games where you have that constant feedback loop interacting with a, a, a being someone is playing that being but having that feedback loop when we couldn't go out and see our friends I think was what kept a lot of us together yeah. kept a lot of us alive I think 
Oh, for sure. I mean, I was on the other end. I was more Animal Crossing because <laughs> I wanted I Utopia. Right? Oh, can I swear I didn't ask? <laughs> I fucking love Animal Crossing. I Make fucking more Animal love it Crossing. too. I'm going to swear as well. <laughs> Make um, more. Yeah, so we went on the softer end, but I was also, I had a, a full-time job. I had been, for a very mm. long time, I've been going, this acting thing's not happening. It's not happening. And you got no kids, you got no mortgage, and you're going to have no pension, and you're going to die alone and cold in Tory Britain. No. So we just, no, no, <laughs> no, no. So I didn't want that. So around... I'd done all the sort of out of work actor jobs just to cut a very long story short. It was quite a long career of, of sort of not working or not working in media that's um, where, you know, you see the actor's face so much. Yeah. Um, so um, I decided uh, rather than temp, rather than, <clears throat> excuse me, rather than increase my word count, I'd learn to code. And um, I wasn't a front end engineer. I have no creativity visually in that, in that aspect, but I was interested in really boring service stuff, oh. um, which is great for finding work because it, it turns out lots of banks and stuff use that sort of, and government stuff use that sort of thing. So um, I, 2021 was when I got the job because I was supposed to get it 2020 and the company sponsoring us went, sorry, guess you're on your own. <laughs> you're like, are you, you kidding? No. It's March, 2020, like, do you know? <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> so I did even more training. So I benefited from a lot of, um, you know, diversity type projects. Um, and it's quite nice, like cloud software, um, uh, what else do you call it? A, a DevOps um, yeah. engineering, because there are no non men in that space. <laughs> like, and and yeah. to be honest, the, the guys, I, I'd gone to so many conferences. I like the culture of that. They tended to be management or senior management. They knew how to look after people. They were, it was, I really enjoyed that space. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's very different when you're doing it for fun and doing it for an employer. Imagine. So 2021 until actually pretty much the end of Baldur's Gate 3, I was, I was working a full-time job oh, from, wow. from my long? bedroom. <laughs> yeah, oh so um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't involved um, until the last year of Baldur's Gate 3. But I sort of came in and she was ready to go. So I was, I was doing every other day and a full-time job. And my God, she kept me so happy. I was getting very depressed at work because my job was meaningless. Line go up. Uh, my job was meaningless meaningless and I was creating more work for the company as, yeah. as a consultancy that was my job it wasn't actually to solve the problem it was to create more work and the bureaucracy it just got to me as, as polite and lovely as everyone was it, yeah. it sort of everyone was playing this game of let's spend more time talking about the thing which I found very frustrating yeah. um so yeah she was a real distraction from that sort of thing yeah it was amazing. Oh my God. <laughs> the best time. And I was just that, you know, it's like every, it made it very present that this might not last. You know, this could be the last job you do because it was, I was just very lucky that it wasn't very far from me. I was going, yeah. I'll do a few nights because they told me 10 sessions and I'd be done. So I was like, okay, I'll, that's fine. Don't jack in the day job, obviously. So it was one of those. And then they kept extending the time. And then by the end, I was like, I think I should just leave so I can do this all as it, like I'm supposed to. So yeah. it's, yeah, just as I kind of had quit in a way, not for short term, like audio stuff, but yeah. for theatre, um, uh, commercials, TV, film, where you are expected to drop everything at a moment's notice just in case. Can't do that with a salary job. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was just one of those things. And, and as I realised, the role was big. Not that the game was big, but the role was bigger. Then I felt a bit more confident in that, actually, yeah, screw this, I hate it. <laughs> Jacking it in. Damn. Yeah. Uh. But my God, what a, you know, while you're playing a character who's making the most of borrowed time, mm -hmm, it was, mm -hmm. that was what was very prescient with that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> That's a very long answer to your no, question. No, no, no. I, I, I love that. I want to, I want to uh, talk about her more. Um, personally, I love her because I see, I see her very much as chaotic good. And part yeah. of what, part of what I identified with her is that she's hard and soft. Yeah. And I feel like as a, a woman or a femme at, in, at, on any level, you can't be, I mean, in the industry, in performance and whatever, you can't really be hard and soft and seen as, um, I don't, I don't want to say the word worthy, but seen as like, maybe like worthy of attention. Um, I read all your BAFTA interviews and all of like your, your stuff. Thank you, you for talk, your service. <laughs> well, you, you, you talk a lot about not being able to fit into a box. Yeah. And that because you didn't look a certain way, didn't, were not a certain way and people judging you based on what they saw and not what you had to offer. And I very much got that from her. I would always, when I played D&D, &D, I always play the, I play barbarians, play, play, you know, big, strong characters. My hobby of choice is powerlifting. 
uh, not very I used dainty. to do that. I used to do it really? before I got ill. I loved it. Uh, yeah, I got so much of a rush from it. So then I'm also playing somebody who who was very strong, not strong anymore. Yeah. So they've got yeah. that as, as having lived that too. Yeah. So that was all going on. Yeah. Yeah, but she's... I love it. She's inspiring people to lift. She is. There's yes, going to be yes, a generation me, of girls yes. <laughs> now. And I mean girls who are lifting, who only know her. You know, I guess you and me, maybe it was Sarah Connor doing pull-ups in Terminator mm -hmm, 2. Mm -hmm. or can't remember the name of the character in Aliens. There's that character Rip who also Ripley, is in Terminator yeah, 2. No, not Ripley. Ripley. There's, there's one... Uh, oh, Vasquez? Oh, I know who you're talking about. Is that, she's got a Spanish, Hispanic surname. But anyway, Vasquez. she's oh, also... please don't kill us, everyone. She, yeah, don't we're talking about. on this. I mean, it'd be an interesting one to go out on. But um, no, she's also in Terminator 2. She's the foster parent of John Connor I just put two into because it's both oh, James right, Cameron right. yeah. <laughs> oh my god but yeah. anyway she's like absolutely yes. like you know we had that and Sarah Connor and Ripley obviously and and now the kids have got Colac I think that's amazing the old I, lifting yeah I yeah and, you know, but there's such a to answer the actual question there's such a wealth of a dialogue written by the genius like character of Sarah Bayless yeah. um, that we could go everywhere because we had to go everywhere we had to do we've also got the version if you play the origin Carl like, we mm. don't have Tav's good influence you know you could go either way and mm -hmm. um, Carl likes very much about just trying to make the best of what she's got and then maybe make a difference and that might be positive I think in a regular run and in an origin run I think you've got even more options to yeah like a dark lack run as I like I just made that up that's my thing. Dark Lack run dark with Minthara by my Hashtag. side. <laughs> Hashtag Dark Lack. <laughs> yeah, I just, you just get it fangirl for 30 seconds. Then we'll go back to the it. interview. Let's, you played her so beautifully. And I just, I just remember sitting there being like, because again, a lot of female game characters can be very, very, very delicate or they're a mother. It's like they're, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I do, I do not have children. I am not, you know, a mother or they're, you know, the beautiful princess or the beautiful, the savior or whatever. And I never identified with those characters mm. because I was like, I'm not, I, I have been socialized. Uh, you're living proof that you, that, that you're not that character. Right. Yeah. yeah like, and you don't I'm, see yourself anywhere. No. Yeah. And like I had, um, I empathize very deeply with sort of your roundabout, uh, journey into the industry because I also had a very painful, very like tough journey into writing and narrative mm -hmm. design that I know counterparts of mine that were not Say it. women. <laughs> counterparts <laughs> of mine. Counterparts of yeah, mine. Yeah, yeah. Um, Some people have yeah. it easier, right? And it's based on looks or perceived whatever. Yeah. I it's it's definitely I know we talk we talk a lot about like oh you know games and like we're diversifying now and everything we are but it's still I st there are still patterns there are still yeah. patterns there and games is very much like yep. male driven but I had a really tough time coming in and so when I finally got to this level where it's like I'm a, I'm a I'm a writer I'm a narrative designer I'm at a point where I can mentor young people from marginalized groups I was just like yeah like painful to to to, to get here and then playing Baldur's Gate finding Carlac, playing, just interacting with her. I was like, that's me. Like, this is my, this is my, my, my person. And I just saw so much of like, that's what made the game for me as I was like, this is, this is my person. This is who I would be if I lived in a fantasy mm -hmm. world. Finally, someone who's not this, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, you know, so thank you. Oh, again, thank you to the writing. <laughs> Cause that's what it required. I remember when I, I started and, um, I think because of NDAs and there's no sort of meet and greet, like you yeah. just work out who's who while you're there. And uh, Neil Newborn was finishing up in a uh, booth next door and he sort of bounded over and asked who I was. And he went, oh my God, Carla, we've been looking for you for ages. We can't find oh anyone gosh. to play. So I did something in that audition that, that they went with and I th that gave me a lot of power to just go, well, obviously what I'm doing is what they want. I don't, I don't feel I'm doing anything. I feel I'm just going, if it was me, this is how I'd play it. And obviously yeah. like she's got all her modifiers, right? I like reading books. She really hates them. You know? So we're not, <laughs> we're not exactly on a par, but the, you know, the, the, the red button is injustice. That's a really big one mm -hmm. for both of us. And we're in the world of Baldur's Gate. So there's a hell of a lot of it about, um, but it took, it took three people and two years to get me into that role. So we had Kirsty Gilmore, who I've known for years, who's endorsed me for years and been trying to just get me in the room. I was doing okay with sci-fi and fantasy audio, but no one cared in games. I'm <laughs> going, I'm in Sandman. I'm yeah. in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Can I not have some words, games maybe? Are, games so it was weird. just a bit weird. Um, but she'd been fighting to get me in, and I auditioned for her during the EA phase. It would have been, and I didn't get it, and that's fine. And I thought, well, I'm the only British actor who's not going to be in this. Just have to accept it. So many of us in this. And... Um, <laughs> 
Then it was doing the excavation of Hobbs Barrow, which is a yes. point and click adventure set in the north in, in, in Victorian England, very different from Karnak. Um, and I got spotted in that by um, Michael Douse, who's head of publishing at Larian. And this was when Twitter worked. Twitter worked so I could see I it in my timeline. Do you remember those days? It was really good. Twitter worked. And, um, <laughs> but I mean, my big jobs have been from Twitter. It's major. I'm not being flippant here. Um, you know, Mike Bethel, we just saw outside. He slid into Love my DMs. Guy. He started all this, right? The whole sliding into DMs, I never, but now I do it all the time. <laughs> and yeah, I just said, look, if you're saying really lovely things about this, could I maybe audition for a significant role? in this you see you gotta be careful yes, please. Please, because it could be like one line or somewhere and I was like well no if I'm gonna do it let's do it properly and um yeah he he, he wrote to pit stop and within a day or two they were like yes we would love to have you in we remember you from last time and that was uh Josh Whedon and he says create Josh as in Joshua Whedon who gets excited like, Josh no 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 Josh, <laughs> Josh not that Whedon. one different different um very similar names and and then he wanted me to read for Karlak specifically so between the three of them Ooh. we got to me playing Karlak that took two years so it's wow. it's it's extraordinary and um as I said something I did in that audition and there's something about having the endorsement of the head of publishing from that company to me you go yeah I'll just do what, do you know what I'm just gonna do what I want to do I've got nothing to lose and it was one again one of those I've got a day job that pays incredibly well it's not gonna matter I'll get over it and I just did whatever I did and then from then on I just did whatever I did and so anytime I've talked about you know when I talk about the romance and said that I imagine talking to a woman that was to make sure that our Suffolk players felt included it's not to do about the exclusion mm -hmm. absolutely not and if I said I went in and, and imagine talking to some really hot dude would anyone even blink and I know they wouldn't but I've been disappointed so many times and I'll name it Dragon Age <laughs> Mass Effect you're playing female you romance a female and then mm -hmm. it's weird it goes all male gaze and, and all, you know, and Carla is soldier and she's tall and she's big. And of course mm. she can be girly, she, but she's more sort of puppy dog yeah. fl floppiness rather than feminine. And oh, okay, now you've broken through the hard exterior and here I am. We're not doing that. We're going to no. do something quite different. Just make sure it's consistent. So that's what I meant when I, when I say that, of course, like most of the time the, the player is an amorphous blob. And I think if, if, if the us actors in isolation no visuals with a director or two to explain that world yeah. to us. A testament to the writing and the d directors and the engineers for creating that because everyone thinks they're being spoken to, whether it's um, a romantic partner or, or, or platonic, which has surprised me. So many people are like, she's my bestie, mm -hmm. she's my sister, you know, it's just, or oh, she's me, <laughs> which is amazing that she means so much to so many people that she's so universal. So yeah. I got lucky with the role and they let me get away with stuff. Like no one ever policed my, my gender, which they kind of don't. So sci-fi and fantasy because you tend to be if you if you're in the sci-fi and fantasy and you're mm -hmm. a leading role you're doing the things you're already gender non-conforming just by the fact you're doing an action role yep. so I've, I've always felt very at home in these realms so that's been good it's just been the very you know small things or, 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 or media where you don't see the face so much yeah. when when um when you so you talk about it's uh, two years three people you came in and auditioned how much did they give you of like of her before you audition yeah. did they give you like here's the full gamut of what she will need to express or were they like here's some stats like how much did you know going into that audition yeah it's a bit of both because she changed from the ea she was a bit more fighter and i can mm. say this because i saw sarah bayless say this so if you didn't mean to sarah I, uh, tough um but she's a bit <laughs> too similar to lazelle and she was she was wiry fighter and i can look back at the audition and go i don't think i gave them very much to go it's certainly not Karlak you see in this game mm -hmm. um uh, yeah, I just think she was different physically. And that was, you know, I'm, I'm closer to small and wiry than I am. I'm certainly not seven foot deep, like beef cake. <laughs> um, uh, but what they gave me, it's on the website, actually. It's, it's Sarah Bayliss's description. And they gave me that and some sides. And one of Ooh. the sides was the, reve let's call it the revenge scene. Yes, and then okay. the other one, the other one was um, a, the famous chat up line. The one chat up line she has, that was in there, which I gave quite like Brian Blessed. It was quite Shakespearean and big. <laughs> they yes. liked it. They went with it. It's like, okay. She, you know, she's, but they gave me, yeah, they gave me some, a taster, but they never said, oh, this is the journey. This is how it ends. It was pure character. So on the website, and I'm paraphrasing is if, if this were today, Carlac would ride in, in on Harley with a cigar between her teeth blaring Sabbath a diesel soaked dynamo with a heart of gold yes she seeks justice for the oppressed camaraderie and revenge on the bastard who sold her to hell now if I can't make something of that what am I doing <laughs> and so I had all of that I had yeah this gentle gentle giant unless you hit that injustice button 
Um, and I've got someone who's also very traumatized, who's hiding it mm -hmm. for most of the game. And, and, you know, why would she make, she's a soldier, she's not going to make herself a liability. Yeah. So they, it was so truthful within a character that had to cover every base and every iteration yeah. of either becomes more bitter and goes in that dark path or, or let, it goes, do you know what? I'm going to be zen about it. I'm here right now and I'm going to make the most of it. So we just, it's just beautiful character i've never spent that long with a character really before oh yeah you do it if i were to do like a shakespeare in london or something we're talking what depending on the company what six weeks of rehearsal a six week run 12 weeks <laughs> you know oh, okay. it's not long it's not very long even oh. if you're originating a new character film you're coming in right at the last minute you're coming you're, you're at the end of production right yeah. and that was more like what i was doing as well that was quite nice and, and i was going in every, i said every other night and weekends and bless them because there was such a a gamut of directors that didn't always know me or the character and they go do you want, do you want me to play back some stuff so you know what you're doing and I'm like no I'm good we did this yesterday oh, <laughs> so wow. I was just sort of flying with it and and I benefited from all the feedback that EA got so they weren't obviously she was play tested and everything and, yeah. and, but there wasn't that much because they really knew what they were doing with her I still can't believe you night car like nights and weekends mm -hmm. and I got to break bread with the the car um, with the crew as well because they were doing overtime. So no one else got that experience. I'm really pleased because we would we'd be all doing in the last hour, trying to make sure it like arrives just at the right time so it doesn't go cold. Oh my God. <laughs> Secrets, Aww. all the NDAs are broken now. Um, well, yeah, yeah, it's but out. It was, it's out, it's out there. Put really, it out but, there. Um, yeah, we were in a good place in London. We were able to get a variety of things. And then we just chill and we talk about things outside of the game, outside of the industry and get to know each other. So it's, it's this army of people that I got to know. And they're, they're just astonishing humans. And they're so young. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's these mocap types. They were just, yeah, incredible. <laughs> and, you know, the job is to, it's collaborative. Yeah. And I, I really got to um, capitalize on that in the fact that I got to know them as people as well. Yeah. Were, so you, they were, you guys were, they were on overtime. Were they, I hate to use the big C word, but were they crunchy? I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, game I turned out know. great. You'd have to ask them. Yeah. I mean, uh, game turned out, turned, turned out great. It's beautiful. We all big dumb c word. Sorry, everybody. Um, but it's um, I love that you got to spend time with the developers because again, as like dev uh, side, the engineers, not the developers so much. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah engineers, because yeah. as uh, as a, a, a dev side, it's so rare that anyone outside of maybe like a writer or a performance director gets a touch point with mm. the people that are playing the characters that these engineers are actually creating. And I know that they just love to see that. So I'm glad you got that experience and they got that experience. Oh, this is incredible. And, and, and getting feedback, oh, it's going really well with the play testers. They love your character. And I'm like, okay, I'll just carry on. <laughs> it's very that. cool. Very cool stuff. I love that so much. Um, oh my God. Sorry. Don't be. I was very thorough when I prepared for this. Um, I, kind of want to well let's, let's talk, talk about Carlac more you mentioned that you two are and I'm sure everyone has been like how are you like her how are you not like her where are you similar and you mentioned like the book thing where when you were were playing her I've read again I read all your interviews talking about like chronic illness and sort of not not fitting and borrowed time where did you like what parts of you are her and what parts of you are solely hers that you have taken with you since playing her or hmm. what did you learn from question. her because i can i don't go on i mean why i said at the beginning of the interview that she was an escape and a distraction is because she was an escape and a distraction it wasn't that i was living 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 with this chronic illness because it's yeah. a little bit different i'm here i'm fine i'm not gonna die young unless something else happens, but not because of this. Yeah, touch all the things, but it's not going to be because of, of my diagnosis. Um, so to, to try and compare that to what Carlex dealing with kind of cheapens it. But the idea mm. of like, you know, I couldn't lift as much because it sets off my nervous system and it goes, yeah. right, you go in bed for two days now. Oof. No more, no more wakey wakey or pain free life for you. So I just have to deal with that. And I'm playing a character whose heart gets overclocked quite easily so I can relate it to that and thankfully you know he's a sort of classically trained actor it doesn't cost me anything right I'm not doing method and again it would be quite an effort oh, to try no. and work myself <laughs> up to, yeah, 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 to yeah. something you know that isn't that isn't destroying me isn't killing me or anything like that um but um yeah in terms of I'm, I'm an empath, you know, I, I, there's a lot of, you know, the, the good thing about being in this industry so long and maybe not acting so much is that I have access to real human beings in the world, you know. Um, 
I know someone, um, a distant relative who's um, elderly now and was Hell's Angels. And so a lot of the time when she's super hard and she's going, yeah, I'm just going to come back and kill you. That's him telling a story about what I he got that. up to. You oh know, that cold, the cold rage of like, don't try me. You know, like this is going to end extremely badly for you. So just, that's just in there. That, that's people I know. And the gentle giant thing, there's a lot of men in my life. Because going back to like um, Sarah Connor Ripley, they are they are survivors in spite of everything, whereas Carla uh -huh. is informed by, I feel like she's informed. And being in, in the world of Baldur's Gate, this is like a holiday compared to what hell is like. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I was trying to think of how to put it. It's like, imagine like <laughs> taking a really, a bad trip of some sorts, right? And you are in this hallucinatory, hallucinatory world, which is terrifying. And then when you come out, it's been 10 years. And just imagine that pure relief yeah. of not being in that anymore and what you would do with that time. I think that's the only way I can sort of quantify that because the rest is me watching documentaries and things. But again, not while I was doing it, it's just a lifetime's work of knowing people, of watching how other people live yeah. and, and that being plausible. Because obviously I'm, I'm working with directors and writers. If I'm being a bit odd with it, you know, they're going to tell me. But I'm, I always like the flippant side because that tells you more about her. This is, not, this is water of duff, duck's back. So when it does hit her, when something really hits her and, and that's some of the emotional beats around romance, because she's not really had that as an adult. She was a young adult when she went to Avernus, so she hasn't really had a relationship. Yeah. And you know, the predicament she's in as well, you start <laughs> dicking around in camp, she's not gonna be too happy about it considering <laughs> what she's going through. So with those moments, we really like went to really make the player feel like shit. <laughs> Yeah. Which if you've seen those, if you break up, yeah. we <laughs> Hard I think her, her and Will, her and Will are like, are just going to make you feel it quite right too. <laughs> That's such a, that is the, the, the one, the one thing about, about Baldur's Gate that I, I think about quite, quite frequently is there's, you're in this predicament, the predicament. And yet you're like in your camp, like. Well, yeah, because Good. we've only got how many days yeah. left? We're all hot young singles in your area. Some of us are 200 years old. <laughs> we're, we're looking very good for our age, right? <laughs> so maybe not Withers, but everyone else. Yeah. Everyone else doing good. I mean, I know there's a fun base out there for Withers. So I'm not going to lean there into is... that. <laughs> I heard you laugh over there. Someone read into it that Carlac was interested in Withers because she made a joke. She said, oh, I think Carlac, she said, um, Withers was giving me the old, the old eye the other night, or maybe it was just an old eye. And people are like, oh, she likes him. I'm like, no, that's a joke. That's no, a joke. It's, no, I, mean, I mean, we know like she's not that fussed, but she's a little bit fussed. <laughs> Look, even if like the world was ending, I had limited time. I don't think I would choose Withers. No, he's just going to be judgy. Yeah, and also During like and after. <laughs> yeah, and if you succeed and you all survive, then it's really awkward. Yeah, you have to Although explain you to might your have friends some favors. You know, later on you can cash <laughs> it. You fall on hard times and get downed in battle. Call in that favor. <laughs> oh God, I'd be worried about having to explain that to everyone else. Like so, um, well they'd know, wouldn't they? Because they're they're in the. Oh, that's right. Yeah, about embarrassing. <laughs> Now I'm just thinking about it. Please don't. Do I have time to write any fan fiction in the upcoming months? Probably not. You've also wished that into the world now. By the time this comes out, someone will have done it. So I, I, <laughs> doing the hard work for you. <laughs> Please don't send us send anything. Me, me. Send, send it to me. I, God knows. <laughs> God knows. Um, I, want to, I want to talk about, um, go back to talking about Carlock. Carlock. I'm tongue-tied. Carlock, and you mentioned Sapphic. And I, again played her very sapphic me and a couple of other writers we have like a little like ladies femmes writer circle and we always are talking about like oh finally this game did this to this female character well like obviously we're all at different studios but we like to share and talk about our craft and part of what we really like about Carlock is the sapphic lean and I just feel like again not a lot of games you're not seeing it but I think for us like coming out of the pandemic a lot of us have sort of had time to sit with ourselves and think about things and some of us have like completely changed our lifestyles and some of us are realizing you know we like things and we didn't realize we like but we have had time to think about it and we feel like she is the herald of the sapphic era oh, I love of game characters like she, she <laughs> she's, there she's, for me. she's the queen huge influence oh, see. all of us are working I had on no things. idea that yeah was a, yeah a lot of us and all of you in the group chat you know exactly who you are thank you group chat the group chat um but that's the thing right? i had an opportunity <laughs> right and i have very few in my life as an actor to to make a difference in within the performance yeah, yeah. and i was like we are not 
going, oh yeah, she's basically a lesbian biker chick, but we're not going to play it that way. Like, you know, I told you pretty much what that, what did you get from Sarah Bayliss's description of Carlac is what I'm going to ask you. I, so for, for me, from what I just, I told you earlier, I mean, on the surface yeah, level, yeah. you hear biker chick. Yeah. But when you get into the second half of that description, it's definitely like the, the non- non-chaos I'm bisexual but I prefer women sure like and I'm also soft and hard nice soft and hard yeah. is my yeah soft and absolutely hard. so how can I go into it going okay well obviously this is going to be played by men so what we'll do is we'll send <laughs> to them we'll send to them and then you know good luck if you feel left out and I think we, all I mean all the characters are pan um there's some sort of weird debate about Carlax canon sexuality and this is where it's interesting where all these lines are, oh don't I'm just yeah I'm trying not to get drawn in because of course like you know people have no one's playing it wrong just don't tell other people that they're playing it wrong do you know what I mean yeah. so there's a whole thing about like um well she's pan I can tell you why she's pan come off the nautiloid don't talk to shadow heart long rest there's a monologue <laughs> where Carlac writes her own fan fiction about what she's going to get up to. And that is everyone. She's going to get up to everyone in Baldur's Gate. It's canon, right? Yes, please. Now, if you want to play that she has a preference, then go for it. Brilliant. Wonderful. And if you feel included, fantastic. What, what this game has done at a cultural level, because it is at a yeah. cultural level. And, and as I speak, PhDs are being written on the cultural phenomenon of the gender and sexuality representation in this game. It's mm -hmm. there all the way through, you know, the, the UK games industry. I know they're in a, a base all around the world, but Belgium specifically. Uh, but the writers are in, in Dublin for most of the part, and from around the world. The UK games industry, 24% of, of people surveyed were on the rainbow. It's huge representation. Yes. So it's not just, you know, um, actor writer it's got to be at all levels right this, this, this and, and within the engineers that i worked with like mocap and audio it was pretty gay it was great sometimes you just walk around oh, I love go, this. everyone's queer wonderful this is great let's embrace this so it was all it was it was imbued with that and and, and didn't really matter where, where a director was coming from they never ever stomped on that they just let that and it was like i remember saying earlier who am i talking to they're like the player <laughs> You're talking to the player. Yeah. So, the, so again, when I, you know, if I'm, if I did, if I were to do something subconscious, if I'd imagined them dude, and I'd go, just acquiesce a bit, you know, if that was in Carlac, that might've happened. And that's why I was like, don't, don't go there. Let's not, when someone, something is so obviously for the suffix, yes, let's just yes. make sure they're catered to first. And it turns out dudes, are so my whole career I've been going, because oh, you're a bit butch, aren't you? Which kind of suggests a sexuality rather than a gender, but sure, sure, a bit butch, right? And then you go, have you actually met one? Because it ain't me, <laughs> it ain't me, it ain't me, baby. And there's what, you know, again, the, the sort of window of, of, of that um, mask feminine energy on, st on the stages of Britain, it's, it's really, really narrow. Like you wear trousers, must be a dyke. You know? oh, <laughs> Just like, yeah, but it was all very like, well then obviously you can't play the main character's girlfriend because I don't think they'd be interested in you. And I just, I just love the vindication that's come with Carlac. <sighs> yeah. Going, oh no, the dudes are up for being picked up and carried around and adored, you know, as, as they should be. So I'm, I'm glad that's, that's it's all there. And, yeah. and you know, if it, to be honest, if it wasn't coming across, you know, if loads of the player base were, were left out, we'd go and retake. But I just love the fact they just let me get on with it. There was no discussion yeah. or anything. I just went, well, I've been employed to just do my version of this. And obviously you, you got directors guiding you through and giving you context, but they just let me get on with it. They let me do what it's I amazing. wanted to do. So again, what a gift, what a gift of a role to be able to do that. That's the dream that I, I feel like again, as like, writer i worked on a few things i feel like the fear not the f not our fomo as like a developer but the fear that someone will miss out if you have a character that represents a specific thing can often change the way we want to tell our story because we want we want everyone to relate mm -hmm. or we're catering to a certain audience like i i once upon a time worked on call of duty there's a very specific audience for call of duty um no judgment but like when you're writing a story for it there's like the uh, there's a specific audience that that you're writing to and specific stories that resonate with them and specific mm. stories that they they want to hear so it's refreshing to see something like Baldur's Gate where you have the you know like really amazing soft hard sapphic and then you also have soft masculinity like yeah. over here and you sort Isn't of have it gorgeous that. the three oh main uh, male origin characters how soft they are it's so just gorgeous soft. i love and we all love them and it worked they're, they're the men i know in my life they're people i know you yeah. know and we had to go to a fantasy realm to see that represented isn't that interesting 
but that's like <laughs> fantasy. Like yeah. this is the, the fantasy realm. I, I, I feel like we're seeing a lot more games, a lot more media that sort of explores softer masculinity, mm. um, intimacy between between male characters that is like strong friendships mm. um a weird callback into the past i think of like final fantasy 15 where you had like the four boys in the in the camp in the car and everyone was like ooh there i'm like no, 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 no. They, yeah no, i mean i mean okay i would not have i wouldn't have minded it if they kissed i would they have been very like they were very excited. ready to kiss i feel like maybe two Those of them maybe kissed like once noctis definitely kissed prompto like once um <laughs> But like at least once, um, but they were they were just written very beautifully. Yeah. And like the last line of the game, he delivers. It's like to them, I like I like you guys are the best. And everyone kind of dogpiled on that game a little bit because they treat. I mean, the treatment of the female characters were are a discourse, capital D, unto themselves. But that was not the focus of the game. The mm -hmm. focus of the game was these male friendships, and you see it again in Final Fantasy sixteen. And like you see that 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 softness and that openness of like dudes have all of these feelings and you see it in media like ted lasso i think of ted lasso i think of our flag means death mm -hmm. like two of my favorite shows of the last um past couple decades even um what we do in the shadows kind of say, like, like the concords so we're talking like about the, the same concords. people <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah 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 you've allowed and that in yeah and it's just so like and as a as a a, a woman a femme i enjoy those stories mm. yeah very much it's like a almost like a masculine soap opera yeah. kind of but yeah, I'm glad we I'm glad we have those and I want to see more of them, please, everybody. Um please, more stuff. Please, please make them. More please, variation. Please make them. Please make more of them. More guys. Let them kiss also. Please make them kiss. We please have make them kiss. Some of us, some of us. Again, I'm referencing like this like sh this, this like nebulous shadow group of like writers that all talk to each other. I forgot. Is that who what you said call it? a nebulous shadow the group? The nebulous of, shadow group. We're all out there. I, I might want to become a writer just so I can join. Yes, Sounds please. so cool. Come hang out. Uh <laughs> we we like our uh, spicy margaritas. It's our drink of choice. Um but someone, I don't know who said it, and they will tell me when they listen to this podcast, gay until proven straight. Yeah, I think for any actor, for actually, actors, you're yeah. pretty much pan until proven, whatever. Okay. You've just got to be open to it because you don't know what's coming either. <laughs> um, and you are, you're, you're an empath. You're not playing yourself. It's yeah. not a documentary. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. On the subject of representation, and now we're talking about like games and games and stuff, um, going back to your interviews, again, I mentioned this earlier, not fitting in a box, not mm. feeling like you fit in a box and sort of having this long journey into realizing like you don't have to fit into a box to be employed i mean i don't care personally yeah. my, all my outside problems have come from the outside or external it's other people mm -hmm. feel i have to fit in a box mm -hmm. and just in case like you you're not watching this or you can't see me i am aggressively mixed race it, i am a white supremacist worst nightmare because they cannot tell where i'm from and it drives them crazy it's hilarious i love it but within within the game within <laughs> traditional let's say british media and it's a, a it's a few people casting you know yeah. um uh, they don't want to see me represented or something they're just saying i don't look british don't look like i'm from london so i really don't have a chance there and that basically someone like me but i don't i do and i don't exist because i do exist i'm being excluded but apparently i don't my story doesn't get told you know yeah. and just just for a little just a little just where we're at with that so we've got the bafta breakthrough which is like a careers thing that bafta do which is great it's for people like me that have been, been you know, are going at this for a long time and just not getting, not getting the, the, the pushback. But, but, it, but it's a really nice way for the industry to recognise you, and it's, it's like a career thing throughout the year, and they'll put you in touch with the people you've been gate kept from, and all of that. It's yeah, really yeah. good, careers guidance, all that sort of thing, amazing. So I, I start with that, and then I go, yeah, like Dice nominated, and uh, BAFTA long list at the moment for the second time in a row. You yes. know, so I'll do all this, write all this beautifully, and go look. Here's a scene where, like, I did body. I, I act with my body too. Like, look, it's like stage. I can convince you. Why don't we have a general meeting? Right. So I, I've written to one because I didn't want to do a load and whatever. I wrote to one very big West End uh, thing, and they wrote back, um, "Thank you for writing to us. Uh, we will look at your CV and we'll keep you on file." Boo. And I just feel like I'm just not going to bother now. It's just like, am I going to just tailor lots of these to the specific cast and direct and get exactly the same response that I got? <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter because it's games, right? It doesn't yeah. matter. And I know last year at the BAFTA shortlist, they interviewed three people on that out of the six. And, and they were asked, well, does this, has this opened doors across? No. <laughs> what? No, no. Um, 
Charlotte McBurney from um, Plague Tale uh, said that a cars and Ditcher opened a trailer for the game as a result of her BAFTA nomination. That's on record. So, yeah, so I'm not holding out hope, but whatever. I mean, if someone said to me that when the games industry wasn't where it was, if they said to me you would make a comfortable living uh, in video games for the rest of your life, I would say sign me up. I have no problem with the medium. It's it's the, it's the lack of work. Just as a performer, there's not that much work. <laughs> and uh, I'm waiting for the next job. So <laughs> that would be nice. They're available. I'm very do available. Um, what, what do you think, from, from your perspective, what do you think we could do as an industry, as developers, to stop that kind of, like, gatekeeping? Obviously, we're getting better about representation but from your vantage point mm. what could we be like what could we be doing better how could we work it's difficult i have yeah. such a good strike rate right? when i meet the person at the top when i meet the decision maker the director the head of publishing yeah, yeah. I, I get in but it's the gatekeepers and the good and the bad thing about um the industry in the uk is that there aren't really any there's no there's a couple of cast and directors in fact kirsty who originally suggested me is a cast and director and voice director. And um, she has been endorsing me for years and that's what you need. And unfortunately, when you work through like, particularly big games and you're going through third party outsourcers, they go to the same five audio book companies. So oh. what that happens is they put some old man with a nice voice in the suit and he may never have acted from the neck down. And that's the end of that story. <laughs> You know the rest. So, I mean, we, we were lucky in, in, in the UK, as I said at the beginning, most of us would have gone through a full-on three-year conservatoire drama school training. And then Maggie and uh, Ben, they went to Lambda. I went to a place called Guildhall. Um, uh, most of the origin cast would have gone through, through a three-year drama school training. Wow. So Shakespeare mainly. And yeah. a bit of modern stuff. Shakespeare, nothing modern. <laughs> that's, that's the, the, and then like a week or two on TV and film, which is basically, look, just stay on your mark. Think the thoughts. Don't don't act with your face because that looks weird. They'll be very <laughs> forgiving on the day because you won't know like the technical side. Games, what's a game? Audio, that's the equivalent of a pub job if you're a well-known actor. Interesting. So okay. in, ja in Japan, you're a god. In the UK, cleaning toilets. So there's also that stigma as well. You know, there's a stigma with, with audio. And I've watched many, because I've done some very high profile stuff. I've watched many an A-lister just fall on their ass uh, because they thought they could do some screen acting. So there's nothing uh -huh. in the voice. <laughs> it's all in the eyes and the thoughts, which <gasps> funny enough, there's not a microphone for that. So um, yeah, they have to learn on the day how to do it. And uh, that's always quite sobering. I didn't, <laughs> uh, I have so many questions right now. One, <laughs> I didn't realize that the UK like acting industry was so radically different than what uh, I guess you're talking about the land of class here <laughs> we invented <laughs> this system we don't talk about it we talk about everything we keep talking about like race because that's very visual we can see that oh yes and yeah. there's certain people will now you know be helped a bit um and others no you're still not enough <laughs> come, come back in 50 years maybe um you know and, and whole intersections are forgotten and class is huge and, and I've had that battle when I used to do DNI work when I was in tech before I fully transitioned in um I was just trying to make it nice for people Oh. Um, which is again leading with empathy and I would say like okay so what about a um, middle-aged white guy who um, is dyslexic um, he's been working um, minimum wage jobs all his life can he come to this for free and they're like it's a white guy I'm like but he's not had the opportunities so you're going on a very visual basis yeah. the way you're so we, I think yeah should be really careful I think really it's going to take change in power and those, those dudes because they're dudes they don't want to give it up and that's essentially what it no, comes down don't. to they do not want to give it up so it's interesting how for a while the change has been so surface level on the casting level now that's sort of bleeding up into writers I think and maybe devs a bit more um, and I don't know where it goes from that I'm not sure like once you get into C-suite does that probably probably doesn't apply does it it doesn't apply but um on these more the more visual that role is the more they'll do it because yeah. it looks great it's great publicity but when it actually comes down to it and handing over the reins of power oh you know what sharing just sharing yeah um yeah. i don't see it happening and i think until then we're always gonna have to start from zero yeah like i do when i'm between jobs because there's no casting director to remember me you know on, the, on that side there's no, no one to stop you but there's no one to go okay you were great in that we'd love you for that what the hell? <laughs> so if you're wondering, like, like, well, these actors are huge in other games, like, cause we, unless we have that connection. Um, the good side is if you're a gamer and you can come to events like this or other local stuff, you will meet them. Yeah. And I've had, you know, because we know you wear all the hats. 
you know, the composer might might be casting voice or something, or the yeah. director is also the writer. And so you meet people and yep. we all network for each other. We all try and get each other jobs. So it's all super friendly, but it's just such a, that, that very low level rather yeah. than with the people with the money. It, it's a bit of a slog, but um, I really, truly adore the people that, you know, if you've seen It Takes a Village, you know, you can see mm -hmm. that the, all these people I talked to are genuine friends. I forget I'm networking and isn't that, isn't that a wonderful thing, you know, in the midst of yeah. everything I've been saying is that we have those real connections which is kind of what it's all about anyway. Yes, the video games were the friends we made along the way. <laughs> I wanted to talk about It Takes a Village. How did you, like, when, how did, when did, why? Like, why did you start yeah. it? What was the thing that was like, I have to do this? Like, and where do you want it to go? To try and keep it as short as possible. Um, in, in 2017, I think, as, as a result of the, the lineup looking very white and male, I think, I was asked to do a panel at um, Adventure X. Uh, in London with uh, Dave Gilbert, who would then later employ me as a chair. And uh, Doug Cockle was there. And I was like, oh my God, no one is here to see you. <laughs> so I'm like, no one. I just let him talk because it's like, no one's no one's interested. But as it went on, so we were talking to, you know, um, micro indies and, and people just interested in making a game. And it was very apparent that they were not in the roles I was expecting. So film, TV, theatre, director's a director, composer's a composer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Is a and they don't cross. So if I had been um, impatient in an audition, gone with them, well, why don't they know what they want? <laughs> you know, at least I know about dialogue trees and stuff because I play, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to get frustrated that I said seemingly the same thing three different ways. You know, I, I totally get that. And I know some actors get very frustrated by it. Uh, but, you know, maybe play some games <laughs> if you're going to be in games, you know. Yes. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, so I, I, that started there and I, I got, oh my God, we don't know what we, people don't know what the other person next to them is doing because they didn't know what I did as an actor. They didn't realize like I, I started to make the, the comparison to like a, uh, a session musician as in they've done all the work outside of the room. So when they come in, they're ready to go because people mm -hmm. are like, oh, you did it one or two takes. So, well, yeah. Time is money, <laughs> you know, and a lot yeah. of it's sight reading and that's the skill of the job that really is. And, and you've spent years training and life experience, like I said yeah, yeah. earlier, like, and you just go and you're ready to go because you were cast because they thought you were the best person for the job. So you're not going to be like agonizing over, oh God, how can we, unless they've made a mistake and they've cast the wrong person, you're not, that's not going to be the issue. The issue is how do we squeeze much, as much interesting stuff out of this yeah. as possible? So that was a the question. Then 2020, funny not much was going on. And I thought, well, <laughs> hmm. you know, next six months, and I'm a pessimist, right? And even I got, like I didn't think I didn't think I didn't dare to think you know this could go on for a couple of years I thought well okay I'll do a mini conference and it was a follow-up to that um Adventure X in in 2017 or say 2017 2016 but it was a few years before um which was the question what do you do <laughs> Uh, what do you want me to do to make your job easier and, 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 and you know, and the other way around? Yeah. And so from uh, my perspective, that it was writers, directors, casting people and post-production, actually. And we did a little mini panel on each one. It's up on YouTube. And that was it. That was the beginning of it. And then as I got put on a pedestal for Carlac, so we're going to fast forward now to the, the last couple of months, as I started getting put on a pedestal, um, I think we were all saying on panels, like going, you know, it takes a village to yeah. make these count. It does. I mean, my God. And you know, right? but to have cinematics, animation, playtesters, QAs, all of that, mm -hmm. right? It, it really done. People you, you don't know and never meet, but mm -hmm. you cannot take sole credit for that or even like dual credit for that. You know, it's so many yeah. people that do that and I'm so grateful because again, luck of the draw that I got such an incredible character to play. Um, so it came from that and then I was on Twitch um, because I thought it'd be hilarious if I played Origin Karlak talking to herself and me narrating over the top. So I did like a smash cut video, which people liked. Um, waited a while to get moderators that I trusted as well because there were a lot of strangers throwing themselves at me and I've been on the internet we're oh not my. doing that one and then yeah I started playing and then I got made affiliate because it's just the numbers were insane and I thought do I want to make a living um, being the Carlac actor and uh, playing a game that I don't play CRPGs to be honest so I'm, I'm, actually ironically I do play Barbarian because things like Assassin's Creed and Link and <laughs> you just go and smash stuff and get the treasure right mm -hmm. so it suited me anyway and just the novelty of, of being an actor who can play their own character be the only person in the world that can have yeah, that yeah. make that thing and I just thought okay well this could go on for some years but we could start to do things you've wanted to do which is now that I have a platform I want to shine some light on other people that make make our games and that's essentially the yeah. pitch for the show and it's about community endorsement friendship all these and it's it's I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for them it's, it's not just you know three people two years it's also like 
50 people over five years. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's all of that and, and sliding into DMs yeah. and recommending someone who's not in the same discipline as you. Or like the other day, unfortunately, I'm the go-to black actor in the UK, apparently. I'm half Jamaican, just in case you were wondering. Um, it's, it's happened a couple of times where I get into the studio and the character's black as in both parents. I'm like, oh shit, it's too late. It's just too late for me to say. Thankfully, not a main, 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 main character or anything like that, but I've not been happy about it. And I was approached the other day actually to play, but, and I was like, no, we're not doing this. And there are no go-to black female actors unless you are please contact me because they keep con yeah because they keep coming to me but I sent you know I was able to send uh, a non-actor but also two actors that I knew who are nice. of, of the area of the UK they wanted and but but that's what's been done for me you yeah. know Amelia Tyler mm -hmm. gave up a role uh, for a demo where they specify the characters mixed race which I'm happy to play if you're meaning one parent white one black I'm, I'm that's mm -hmm. my heritage right um, so I'm happy to play, but she did that for me. She didn't have to, and she would have got away with it, but she obviously wasn't comfortable with that. And yeah. we all do that for each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what's extraordinary about games, yep. not just within, um, between departments, but within the actors. They're not so competitive, very unusual, very happy here. That's all I can say. I'm very happy if people mm -hmm. actually want to help me out because yeah. I have an instinct to want to give opportunities to other, because why not? Yeah. Why not? It doesn't cost me anything. So exactly. Yeah. And so that was that's how Village came about and, and then I just didn't want so like I broke down the, the money so I thought I'll give half of it away to charity so I don't have a pressure but to, I'm going to be totally honest with you the charity was a second thought it wasn't that at all it was I want to have these interviews and I've realised I'm actually documenting the game industry in my very small way you are, in a very yeah, small way mm -hmm. and it's just the last couple of weeks like people like yourself industry people are noticing it I'm going oh my god this is totally by accident because these are real conversations obviously we don't break NDAs but like we have friend DAs on, on there unfortunately oh, the classic so friend DA for off camera but otherwise it's a, it's a you know so you can see it's a genuine conversation mm -hmm. between people I haven't probably seen in a while in real life because yeah, yeah, of yeah. pandemic and it's just really enjoyable and, and the format of you know me, me starting with quite biographical questions and then by the time we've got a QA and a with the audience which is why I'm loath to say it's a podcast because it's live um, you can't download it as audio only yeah. and and we have questions from the audience so it doesn't yeah. feel like a podcast and they will ask based on what we've talked about so they will ask questions I would never have thought to ask from very silly to very specific and, and, and their, their work yeah. and it's just easy it's a joy and um, I'm now where people are now asking to be on which is great it makes my life I've got a spreadsheet yes. and I yes. think you are already on the list <laughs> Yes. So it's, ha it's happening. It's, it's, it's just gorgeous. And I'm glad that I can do it with, with again, with the, the pedestal that I've been put on to yeah. go, well, actually, rather than the clown around a bit, which I'm an introvert anyway. <laughs> I, I hide behind the mask of the character, yes. you know, and all that. So, so I do that. And then, yeah, if we don't have um, a guest that week, um, then I play a game as well. And, and, and that has been great. And so it's a very gentle ask. Look, I know you're, you've been conditioned to throw money at me, uh, but if I gave half, if I gave half away, I think, yeah, Jeff Bezos, bless him. He needs the cash. He gets about 50% through Twitch, 50% through Twitch. Right. Yeah, and then I get taxed on what's left. Ooh. So I worked out a thousand pounds given to me in my, I don't know, I don't even know. Cause I didn't bother, right? Bits, I suppose, or and it wouldn't be donations, but bits and subs. Yeah. I'm only getting 30% of that. And then I'm going to split that with it. It's just, there's no point. I'm, I'm, I'm doing this twice, uh, once a week for two mm. hours. Yeah. There's no point me putting that effort in. So it's, and it also deflects from the parasocial side as well, which is the idea that someone's going to buy you for, for a bit or a cheer. Yes. So that's gone. That's just gone out of the window. And it's, again, I'm not, you know, the stats come in at the end of the stream and I go, okay, that was nice. I have no idea where it sits. I don't know if I've gone up or down that week and I don't care because yeah. it's not based on that. This is a hobby. <laughs> you know, I, I've been very privileged in that I make money now from Streamily and um, from signing autographs and yeah, that online. Yeah. It's great. And, 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 and that for me, old school, um, a physical exchange feels very honest and it's something I can understand. But the idea that someone buys attention for something that's so fleeting is reading a name out. It doesn't vibe with me mm -hmm. and I'm seeing other people come a crop of it as well because no one briefs you no. the first thing that happens when you get affiliate they go uh, you want a discord and I went sorry so we're going to create a space where we just talk about me all day and I'm in there <laughs> yeah that's my worst nightmare oh. why would I do that with my time I know because I'm again I'm an actor first right trying to get the next job go on what are you going to say I never thought of it that way that's how I think of it I'm oh, immediately no. going like I don't want to and I know people love it and they love engaging in that way and I don't um, I love the idea of making something, uh, an archive really, because I put everything up on YouTube yeah. afterwards. I like the idea of making something lasting. Um, yeah, we've got many people on this list. There's many people in the village. <laughs> there will be more. There's so many people I think it's, that I know. It's wonderful. It is. It's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful way to use your platform. And I know that we're kind of living in the era of the... <laughs> 
video game auteur where it's sort of like you have one person that's sort of yeah let's kill that the yes. idea yeah let's kill like that idea. the face of yeah. the game i am the person who yeah. made the game made i i made alone. game i made it alone i Nobody mean there's made a it. half hour worth of credits at the end but ignore that yeah <laughs> i did it alone yeah there's there's <laughs> there's a lot of that and again as 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 a as someone who is younger who struggled ugh, struggled I've, I've really seen writers hard. get find it really hard to get that listed to get the credit you know? oh my god because i know what ish what's going on in the u.s and just the, the, I had it in a contract the other day to take it out of a contract, the idea that I didn't have to be credited. And I was like, Ew. no, I think I do. I think I do. Oh, God. Why the, would you put that in? Oh, it's a standard contract. Don't do that. No, it's, no, no, no. <laughs> Let's I, get rid of that. What the hell? Because we're so also invisible, you know, as much as the actors are very, very and we yeah. harness social media. That's why we're, what's happened was we went, oh my God, we've got a month to do this, went for everything. And then the algorithm just swept it up through your YouTube. That's what's happened. Like it's, it's totally accidental and weird, <laughs> but we went hard on it on that yeah. first month because we thought Starfield was just going to wipe us off. And didn't happen. Didn't oh my happen. God. <laughs> I Don't do Discord, kids. Do someone do else's Discord. I mean, yes. also like, you know, feel free to talk about me behind my back. I don't care. <laughs> don't, don't talk don't about do my me face, <laughs> especially if you don't know me. Like, <laughs> I, I have, I have a question about, about, parasocialism let's do it in, a, in a second but i wanted to go back to the credits thing <laughs> sure i didn't realize that they were doing that they do that with actors they do it with they do it with writers and developers the the kind of unfortunate standard thing is like if you leave a game uh, punishment yes if yeah. you're a full-time employee and you That's leave gross. the studio before the game ships you get taken out of the credits mm -hmm. it's happened to a lot of friends mm -hmm. of mine and then also there's a problem with if the game gets shit canned before it sees the light of day or maybe it never leaves pre-production and it's done you can't you can't use it on your resume that's right the, the super nda the super so NDA, you can't black hole in your cv right yeah which you could use to your advantage yeah. you could go oh, it was really big i can't talk about it. it's not it's, it's still in development i would have probably yeah. double the credits that i can talk about right now because there was a period of about two and a half years where i was like in a writer's room okay didn't get funded okay whatever moving on to the next yeah. one okay we're in pre no we're not oh like mm. we're waiting for funding for this oh we're not getting it it's done locked in yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's just like Okay. It's a shame there isn't like a, a statute of limitations type thing where after a certain amount of time, you'd at least be allowed to describe your role on it. Yeah, I think some of them do, but I think it's like, it's, some of them were people like 10 know. years. Yeah, people don't. That's I'm like, like that's I'm not going to care in 10 years. In that's 10 years. two careers in the games industry. Like, yes, it is. And as a, yeah. like, I think that for women, it's an average, five to seven Ugh. is the average years you stay. Yeah. I'm on year seven. Uh -oh. So I'm 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 a old uh -oh. You're hag. On your way out. I'm a hag. Oh, the, I mean the UK is, is, is <laughs> horrific. I mean it, the the it's called the UK Census, right? UK um, Interactive Entertainment. Yeah. It's it's the trade body for for games in the UK. And in this census, second time they've done it, it's a third of of people working in the games industry. And it doesn't oh say my. where they're working, but a, a third are, are female identifying. Just in a fact, third? there's more. I mean, I mean, some of it's horrific. Um, there's more. Uh, I assume uh, white trans people than there are black cis people in the UK Whoa. games industry. That is just blows me away. It's the weirdest stat, but I mean, it, it looks at full-time employment as well. So it's not covering everybody. It's actually missing a lot of people. And so maybe more yeah. marginalized people are in more precarious contracts as well. So there is that, mm -hmm, so hope, mm -hmm. you know, but it's only the second time it's been done. So I'm, I'm hopeful that there's more, but under this, yeah, I think it's like 35, the women disappear. They don't come back. If only they I wanted to, right? I'm sure if they wrote an email, they'd get a job. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't have children, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, Ugh! basically. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I hate, see I hate seeing seeing those stats. The game game developers conference does a similar um, survey, and they release it in. Uh, they actually just released the most recent one, I think, in mm. January, um, taken last year. And like, not entirely sure how many people take it, but I think the the stat that came out was like eighty nine, like eighty percent of the people who took the survey identified as like a uh, like cishet uh, yeah, male. That, that tracks and. There and they tracked like leadership positions and stuff. <laughs> uh, does it get a bit smaller? So yeah. women, women were even smaller and smaller, <sighs> and there were no, no women of color respondents at a certain leadership yeah. level. Yeah. And I was just like, 
that can that cannot and that's continue. What I was talking about in terms of giving up power, sharing power, and then you actually, if you do care to look at who's who's yeah. there, it's the same people. For all mm. the statements, for all the the white text on a black background, you know, yeah. it's, it's the same people making these uh, these decisions and, and refusing, like a dragon in D and D, hoarding the gold, <laughs> refusing just, to get just, off it. Uh, you don't need smell, it. All. Giving giving you all the credit. You're a all dragon. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? You can't, are you going to go shopping? Like, are you going to buy you're something? Very comfortable just sitting on it. Are you going to invest? Can you can you use it to go to the moon? Can you use that money to do something? <laughs> Um, I feel very strongly about, like, I work with a lot of mentorship groups and I feel very strongly that our industry needs to start opening more, like opening more doors for people that like, like us that have almost bled out, like mm. trying to get where we are, who now have this, this platform to speak, yeah. but also opening the door for entry level associate. We have a huge problem with like entry level and associate roles. Just they're, they're nowhere. I, I was talking to an, ac an academic just last week about, do you feel guilty? Yes, I feel yes. really guilty now Extremely. sending these people out there. Yeah. How's it been for you? Yeah. Um, what have you been telling them if you don't mind? Because um, I don't know what to say and I'm going to steal it. Like so this. I... It'll get better in a few years. I, I, I hate... I, toxic positivity yeah. is like... Toxic. I can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have had a lot of calls recently with a lot of my mentees, a lot of younger people that I work with. Um, I had the great fortune to be the mentor to an amazing scholar um, for this program, for, for DICE last year, where we're sitting right now, Sarah Ezra Slovak. Hire her. She's available. Um, and you're watching, I know she's watching this. Um, but I had a really excellent uh, talk with her where she just wanted to talk about like, hey, like, she graduated from the NYU Game Center. She's a brilliant narrative designer, mm -hmm. like absolutely beautiful human being and very intelligent. And she was saying, you know, me and my friends that all graduated from the program are very, we're scared. Mm -hmm. Like it's been, we graduated in May, June last year, like the industry, there's all these layoffs. We've mm -hmm. lost like 10,000 people alone in the last month and a yeah, half. Right, and yeah. The rest of us are kind of holding our breath, just being like, I can't imagine the guilt people are feeling, the fear oh, that people are feeling when they've survived this, this cull, because there'll be more. Yeah. You know, there will be. Mm -hmm. um, and survivor's guilt is real. I don't want, like, I people get get like, oh, like, like grow up. You still have a job. No, sur like <sighs> survivor's guilt. It's it's hard to be, mm -hmm. it's hard to be grateful about what you have when people you love and people mm -hmm. you care about are mm -hmm. suffering because mm -hmm. this has been taken away mm -hmm. from them. But so validating all your feelings. Um, what I tell them is to... You harness this, harness that sadness, harness that, that, that feeling of just that vibrating feeling of like, oh my God, what's coming and let sit with it, sit with the discomfort, but let it inspire you mm -hmm. to do what you can with what you have and see mm -hmm. where it takes you. I have seen this kind of discomfort push people to start indie projects that have ended up doing yeah. very well. I have seen people switch career trajectories within the industry, finding something else that they, that they really love. I have seen people, people, you know, either hit the ground running on hustle to put their self out there, make something on their own, come to a show like this and just mm. meet people mm. and talk and learn. And it's let, and then you kind of see like, it's easy to say, don't give up hope. It'll get better. Yeah. It's so easy to say that. If it's you're an actor, that's all you hear, by the way. Really? Go, oh, God, I've been doing this so long. Can you just give me something else? Though? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you say? What do you say? I say, I say, um, let that, like, let, take that fear and turn it, like, turn it into, turn it into energy, turn it into mm. an inspiration. Mm. Like, again, sit with it. Don't run from mm. it. Like, it's so easy. Like, I have definitely had days. Um, I, I purchased for myself a human-sized dog bed that I like to sit in with my dog when I'm feeling these, this That's anxious, amazing. depressive, like, oh my God, yeah. what's happening? And I have my potato chips and my Stanley, my Stanley knockoff full of water. And I, <laughs> and I sit there and I'm just like, oh, and I think. And not moving immediately, not having something to action on immediately is not an action yeah. if you're thinking about it. Yeah. Marinate on it and let it push you. Like I think about what you just said, how you made It Takes a Village because you saw a hole. You saw something that, that, that you wanted to say and something you wanted to do. And I think of, you know, I think of my, my conversation with her. We were talking about like her and her friends have this, they made this, this beautiful demo as their senior mm -hmm. project. And I'm like, 
they love it so much. Why don't you do it? Expand on it. Yeah. Make it. Oh, are you like, do you want to go find funding? Why don't I introduce you to yes. someone who you can talk to about it? And that's it. Again, yeah. just like you said, yeah. it costs you nothing to say, hey, you should talk to this person. Right? And even if it doesn't result in it doesn't, it's that opportunity. You up, it's, it's not the, opportunity. the end result. It yeah. And it is like the career, the career as such, it's been a series of opportunities mm -hmm. and people endorsing me behind the scenes. That's been the whole thing. Yeah. It's quite interesting like yeah. what you've described because I went through therapy uh, and it was amazing but that I was love thanks therapy. to the day job that I hated <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, just thinking of, of the uh, states of emotional regulation so what you've described what, you've, what I'm hearing from you is, is people going from, from threat into drive Right. And then dog bed is soothing, right? Yes. <laughs> the, the dog, dog bed is soothing. That's really soothing. important because my bad habit was bouncing between threat and drive when I was fully imposter syndromed with, with the tech job, which yeah. I was because I was giving a lot of money to, to be out of my depth the whole time. And I don't think I was ever quite comfortable with the idea. I just didn't know stuff because yeah. mm -hmm. I saw these guys bullshitting every day. Oh, yeah, it's going to take a few more days. And it's like, it's my job. I'm a bullshit detector. It's literally my job <laughs> as an actor to know when someone's not yeah. giving. And I'm just going, yeah, I don't think I can't. I'm actually not very good at lying. I could do it as a character, but as me, I'm not mm, not comfortable with this. So I was so out of my depth. And yeah, the therapist was like, you're just bouncing between three. So like, what, what do you like doing for fun? And I just remember sitting there and I went, oh, I'm really in deep. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't have hobby. Is that bad? I haven't done a hobby in two hobby? years. Like, what's that? I mean, gaming? Yes. <laughs> Maybe when I have a, yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, that's interesting. But yeah, really good to, 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 yeah, absolutely going to drive, but also mm. know what calms you and soothes you. Yep. And the idea of like, they call it radical self-care. It's not a self-care, which isn't a reaction. <sighs> yeah. It's, it's a habit, right? You're doing, you're doing it for you. And it's basically saying no a lot yeah. of the time. Boundaries are great. I do love a boundary. Oh my God. Fucking oh, most boundaries underrated thing to but boundaries. It is, it's, it's to it, it's about looking after your you know it's putting the mask on yourself before mm -hmm. you put it on someone else mm -hmm. so it's you're giving great advice and I'm going to steal it all. Thank you. You can, you can, can Thank have it. You, you can have it for, for free. I just <laughs> don't want to see, I don't want to see the potential next generation of this industry and also all of these wonderful people that are coming in. Yeah. I don't want them to go. Mm. and like shrug and burn walk out away. within a couple of years you know because they've been told either. there's one way to attack this and it is an attack and if you don't do yeah. it you're doing it wrong and I love it's funny because I, I, I say like I, I have nothing to lose from a place of privilege extreme privilege uh, and yet yep. when you're at the bottom and you have nothing to lose yep. it's wonderful because I've also experienced that yep. and that's like all the, the being non-binary is like I've been rejected from a visual media for that basically for that expression the way it comes across yeah and I have nothing. So therefore, I have nothing to lose talking about. There's no fear for me. Yeah. So that that's kind of, so it costs me nothing, you know, absolutely. Yeah. And it works both ways, you know, again, like like doing Takes a Village or endorsing another actor or something like, yeah, good. I'll endorse them. It was done for me. And I'm, I'm glad that's reciprocated. I mean, in a part of the entertainment industry where that's reciprocated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, one of my favorite things about this industry is, I mean, we joked earlier, the video games are the fringe you made along the right the way, but literally <laughs> true. I can walk through, we're at Dice right now, but I could walk through these halls and be like, oh, they introduced me to so-and-so and this is where we went, or I yeah. introduced them and, and, uh, this happened. I um, I went to GDC last year and I had the great privilege to do the Amplifying New Voices program, which is like a scholarship where 30 developers from marginalized groups are given like a full ride to GDC. And um, they, I think the AIS is affiliated with them. Um, and they go and on the Sunday prior to the conference, um, they do like a coaching seminar where you get into groups and you have an assigned coach. I was a coach for a group and you uh, like help them write bios, like you practice a short presentation with them and it's like a little bit of professional development. And I met these incredible, incredible um, young people. And one of them was um, Ashley Cooper, who's currently at Motive. Yes, I'm talking about you, Ashley. You're incredible. Um, and she was kind of looking for, for, for a footing and whatnot. And when I met, I met her, she was wearing this beautiful pink suit and I was in a suit and her necklace was Thor's hammer that had been <laughs> like put back together. And I was like, Oh, one of my very good friends, um, Stephen Rhodes. Yes. I'm talking about you two is the narrative director on, uh, Iron Man at motive. You two should just chat. Like you two should meet yeah. each other. You both have the ability to, you know, eviscerate someone in one <laughs> sentence and you're also very intelligent. I just want you to meet. So because GDC is GDC, these events, a bunch of us went to a tiki bar and like hung out and we're drinking and I introduced them and lo and behold, Stephen yeah. hires Ashley and yeah. she's now running an Iron Man. I've seen that happen. It's developed Beautiful. Brighton, right? And it's just, 
you just go, you're basically, we're all producers and go, look, amazing art would be made if you just meet or just meet, people. just meet because like you're both badasses and I think you get on with each other, you know, that's it. That's it. I was like, cried introducing two old friends and I was like, you're my favorite people and now you get to know friends. each other. Oh my God. I, I got very emotional. It was strange. Yeah. And I think that's, no, I think and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. But I think <laughs> that's what, I know we, like there's all of this crap bullshit kind of happening that just, you see it on the capital D discourse online mm -hmm. and you see all these things and yes, it's still hard, but there is that underlying, like, that's why I tell my mentees, like, don't give up, don't give up your, your hope and let, don't, don't think that you can't find someone else out there yeah. who you can identify with, who you yeah. can talk to, who you can work with. Because underneath it, like I have met the best people and I have seen the best people meet the rest of the best people. And now they're making these beautiful experiences yeah. together that then I get to play. So yeah. like I benefit, you benefit as well. You benefit hugely. You got a free game out of it. I know. I got, I know I'm so freaking <laughs> excited to play, to play Iron Man because two people I really like yeah. are working on it. Um, <laughs> But it's just it's it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing, yeah. and I think we oh. need to spend more time supporting and uplifting yeah, each other for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I feel like that's a good like, it's a good maybe like. How long have we been talking? Oh my god, forever. how are we on time? Oh, how long have we been talking? Forever. <laughs> we started late. We did. We did. So, it would be very easy for me to ask you like what's your dream role like what do you want to do next but i'm genuinely you can ask it anyway <laughs> well i want to ask a shade mm. i'm gonna get get cozy i'm gonna ask a shade of this question mm. so let's say let's say like i'm gonna write a part for you mm -hmm. and you have you get to like pick it. Like if okay. you if you could be like this We're is gonna someone... mad it together now. <laughs> sure. Like if like what give me binary choices. No knowing... watch me un be uncomfortable. <laughs> binary choices. No, no, never. Knowing like knowing what, what what I know about you in terms of how you feel about representation in yeah. your journey and yeah. sort of like where you you are now, like with you talk about Carlac and the pedestal and you're doing it takes a village. What would be like a like a role for you that you were that you would be super excited to play? Could be a character that exists. It could be a kind of character that you can think I give you a concept. It. Give me a concept. Absolutely, yes, please, please. A complex villain that the audience hate themselves for loving. I haven't played many villains. Ooh, really? Okay. No. In okay. fact, I don't think I've played any. Why a villain? Because it's different. Okay. I feel I hit the jackpot with Karlak, you know. And as I said, we've got so much variation within that character. So many paths she can go down. Yeah. I feel like. Incredible. I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't even imagine like an existing character. I think I think whoever they are, they exist out there. Um, but yeah, maybe someone who's quite manipulative in, in the way that the player doesn't realize until it's too late, perhaps. So like <laughs> not quite like frenemy, not quite. No. Just a no, just a different perspective. Maybe very good, maybe very um good at the old convincing, maybe very persuasive. Write this down. It's good stuff. I'm, I I am I am taking a lot you know, of mental notes. You know notes. when you know someone, yeah, and, and that 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 gut reaction just didn't go off. That red flag didn't fly until it was a bit too late. That's what I quite like. Yeah, manipulative, <laughs> evil, evil just for the sake of evil. No, it just they, they all justify. Nobody's out there going cackling in their towel as much as I imagine certain <laughs> billionaires are going. <laughs> I'm evil. This is all mine. Um, I don't. They really do come from the perspective they're doing it for for betterment of humanity or yeah. themselves or whatever that means. Or someone's going to take that away from me, so I have to. Um, you know, nobody. Everyone. Everyone behaves out of uh, think with good intentions, right? You know, the path to hell is paved yeah, with good yeah. intentions. I think that's where I tend to go from. So, so they could just. I think. I think someone like okay, Minthara is a really good example of that. Yes, who's, who's yes, pierced, yes. Who is sort of evil when you meet her? So it's different from what I'm suggesting. But as, as you go through the game, you'll see justification for everything, even if you don't agree with it. But you can see why she's ended up yeah. like that with the specific circumstances of her life. So what I'd like to go on in on is someone who maybe I guess it's Walter White or something, isn't it? It's Walter White because we thought he was a sap and then as it goes on you realize he's actually becoming himself heisenberg is him yes and that's what he's actually always wanted to do he's always wanted to behave like that and mm -hmm. get away with it villain era so i think yeah i mean i'm in my bastard era I've, I've done my hair and everything for it so if we could just slide into a villain era that would be pretty cool just because it's something different and something i'd like to explore a bit more redeemable or not redeemable 
guess that'll be up to the player. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Swim the ground. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. Oh, I didn't ask you the, the parasocial question that I had. Oh, yeah, let's I'm, I'm going to rewind. It, like, is it weird? Like, how do you how do you feel going from you mentioned being introvert? I'm an extroverted introvert. It's painful sometimes. Hmm. But how how does it feel to just suddenly be like everyone kind of assuming that level of familiarity with you mm. or being like, I'm familiar with this character. So therefore I'm familiar with you. Like, yeah. how does that feel? Well, very weird, obviously. I can't yeah. see who's doing that. But I've been told a couple of times that I'm like, I'm in the, I'm a public figure. I'm, like, I'm not a public figure <laughs> or I'm a celebrity. And you're like, no, you just, you're obsessed with the actors in the game. And that's, that's yeah. what that is. But you know, my definition would be like, everyone in the household knows who you are. Right. You know, yeah, like yeah. my idea of celebrity being like, what we said, Taylor Swift is not the actor that plays Karlak in Baldur's Gate 3. Thank right. God for that. <laughs> so it's, it's really interesting what you, and, and that will be used against you. You know, you can't have an opinion because you're a public figure. You have to behave yourself. Oh, if you come for me, that's not fun. if you come for me on I've got right to reply because you tagged me. You know, it's really easy. I agree. I fully I, agree. I, there's people I fully respect in this industry who are major celebrities that will slap back as they should do. You know, I think they've got the right. But thankfully, I said, because I keep my head down as well, it's very few and far between. The presumption's really interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, I think even with my own peers, sometimes it's, it's been a bit odd with people becoming a bit of a fan. And so suddenly there's Ooh. a video camera and it's my mate's birthday and can you do... Ooh. What? No, there's an no. app for that. And I did that once. And the guy looked like I'd taken a dump on him from a height, and which was the intention. So I was very <laughs> pleased with myself. I hope you tell everyone I'm a total bastard. I was just walking away and he said, oh, I'm not a fan, but my mate is. It's there. But <laughs> my God, you're negging me as well. Oh, and, and, and I put it in front of me and I said, I have cameo. And I just walked off and he was like, what? I charge $100 <laughs> I, for I this. I charge money for this and, and I'm going as to. You should. But I was, I was at, it was at, to be honest, it was at a developer facing conference. I was shook the audacity I was like I thought it was a bit much so actually I'd say the weirder it, because it's all about for me it's about not expecting it so for me the, the encounters that I've remembered are the ones coming from naughty devs <laughs> they're very few and far between they're not a problem and I've been mainly okay on on I said the one void of choice so I don't look for trouble because I'll find it you know? um and yeah then they, like, people headcanon you that's new like I've been now this game's been big enough for long oh, enough yeah, that people head are headcanoning me rather than Colac. but even like early on people were saying oh I said something pervy about Karlak on stream and was that okay? And I was like, well, it's Karlak, it's not me. Oh, okay. And I'm like, am I having to explain the difference? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to explain the difference. So I do, you know, if you've seen Village, you see there's a little speech and I say, I'm enough of a commodity. I don't want to be anymore. Give yep. the money away. Do not give it to me. Yep. Because, you know, people essentially are buying you, especially big donors. They're, they're buying you. Yep. It's as simple as that. And yeah. I, I have enough of that with a day job. <laughs> Good God. I had to have a clause taken out where they could get a, a sound alike. Like, why have you put that in there, you moron? Oh my god! Why would I sign off? Yes, fine. Don't credit me, and uh, also don't use my voice. It's fine. <laughs> I'll sign anything. Oh my god! <laughs> for, for a session fee and no no royalties. Oh, no. There's no royalties in this industry, in case you're wondering. Like session fees only, uh, just across the industry. Yeah, that's, uh, that's mm -hmm. normal. Um, yeah, yeah. Some people don't know that they think they're on a payroll or something. So I try and remember to say that yeah I, I i did i i don't think a lot of people know that i think yeah. royalties in this industry are like on dev side you'll get a ship bonus sometimes some companies yeah. do ship bonus and some companies do the company thing but you're where employed it's like once a thing but you're employed but so you're no, following a model of that yeah no, no, no like the plumber. I mean, okay, it's funny you mentioned GDC. I know you want to end, but I'm just going to finish on this. Um, no, when, when we did Game Voices Connect, which was the prototype, I suppose, for, for Village, um, in the comments, because we had, it was a lot of actors were commenting, saying, oh, we're talking about credits and, and NDA. What I call the double NDA, which is you've signed the NDA and they still won't tell you anything. And it's like, just sue me. If I get it wrong, sue me and then we'll, we'll work it out, right? But I want to know what I'm in. Yeah. yeah I, I could be working for like a Marvel game and I'm calling them out because I've auditioned for a Marvel movie, right? And I get an audition for a Marvel movie. Cool. And I'm, yeah, for a one-liner, you know, but it will have my name uh, watermarked on it. Like my, any firstborn or my parents or the closest to kin will be sacrificed if I say what it is. It's all very clear. The Marvel but, NDA but is terrifying. If I do a, a, a game version of that, and, and again, it's not just Marvel, but it's interesting within the same company mm -hmm. if it was a game version they're not going to be telling me what i'm in isn't that interesting and that's that's the culture of it and and so yeah. what would happen is actors have found out they're the lead character in a game at gdc because a gamer mate has gone sounds like you and then they've watched the trailer and they go 
oh, I would have negotiated for that a bit more if I'd known, you know, because I think that's really why we don't know <laughs> what we're in. So you that's don't you terrifying. don't get told. You don't get to the point where they finish and they go, congratulate. They, you, you, they've lost contact. Well, you've gone in as a plumber. You're not going to update the plumber six months later and go, tap's working great. They're done. And that's how I think we're seen sometimes. So in the UK, I've only worked yeah. in the UK, <laughs> but that's how, and, and I think it's just too many cooks a lot of the time we're using like different outsourcing companies and, and like you were saying, I mean, the NDA thing's interesting with, with, you know, working on a project and then not being allowed to talk about it if it yep. gets canned. I also think like, because yeah, the NDA is the NDA and no one's going to come back to it in five years. No one's thinking that and they're moving on to the next thing. Yeah. So we've suggested like equity, our um, actors union in the UK, we've asked for like, can you, you know, after a certain amount of time, can you just tell me what it is? Yeah. It's, it's just do an Excel sheet. Here's all the actors on this date, contact their agents, just let them know what they've been in. It'd be really nice. I, I've, I've been okay because I game, so I guess correctly a lot of the time. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's it's crazy. really not, we have no protections in the UK. That's the other thing. Oh my but God. We don't have time to go into that at all, but um, we don't have that, like by law, we, we don't have protections of the union. Um, yeah, it's, it's like a nice club that you pay money to join. It's not nowhere <laughs> near the, the fees for, for SAG AFTRA, but the model oh, yeah. very different. It's very different. Um, if, if we were to strike, for instance, if you cross the picket line, there's no consequence. You're not allowed to, by law, enforce a consequence. <laughs> so it's sort of pointless. The whole thing's pointless. Yeah. Um, but and also we can't strike in solidarity in case like people were wondering why the UK actors were talking a lot about this but not actually doing we're not allowed to call a strike for solidarity it's illegal it's illegal I don't and like we that. can't discuss minimums because that's creating a cartel cartel is the word they use <laughs> The video game actors <laughs> cartel. cartel. It's happened that to a couple of cool. modeling agencies in the UK. They got fined. It's quite a public case of huge fines because they were emailing about minimums for their minimum uh, for their new models. They were talking about minimums between themselves, and that's um, this competition law that they're breaking. So that's what we're contending with with an industry that is saying, "Yeah, we're, we're going to get you at audition level to sign away the right to your voice to be used for AI." So that, that you know, it's one of those. Oh, look, I've had a great run. You know, me and Ben were joking about this <laughs> on Village. We're like, look, we got in right at the end. I've had a really nice time. <laughs> the, here at the end right of all Right at the things. end of humanity. Well, humanity oh being in your God. games. And I'm so grateful for the opportunities, but I don't assume anything. And as much as I'm really, of course, empathetic to people who, you know, that is their job. This is also my job, as I've said, you know, film, yeah. TV, film, uh, film, TV, theatre aren't particularly interested and that's fine. But now if the games dry up, like, what do I do? I'm going to have to go back to infrastructure engineering, which is fine as long as they're like, Ethical. I'm not sure that word goes with it. Uh, yeah. I thought it was just turning servers off and on again. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't. I was, I was a fool. I oh was a God. fool to be so naive. <laughs> Remote server management, <laughs> essentially, with code. No. I will say, among <laughs> devs, there's so much love for what you guys do. And we, as, as speaking as again as a writer, love working with our actors. Yeah. So I... I I am confident that you guys will still have jobs. <laughs> I, I hope you guys still have jobs because without you, there's nothing. You oh, know? Yeah, and again, nothing. like a, across entertainment industries, the, the writers are treated so oh. badly. Yeah. And my best mates are the writers because they are God. <laughs> They've created you. They have created you. They are, you know, you get to interpret and everything, but there's nothing without that writing. It's, a sim it's just as simple as that. It's the foundation yeah. to everything. And yet so few people respect that like within some of the fans they'll, they'll be very nice about Carl and I go blah, 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 writers and they go yeah 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 but and I was like no it was excellent writing Excuse. it was excellent writing you can't <laughs> polish a turd sorry I can't put it in a nicer <laughs> way you just can't you put little ribbons yeah, yeah, on yeah, it but yeah. glitter on it it's a dirty thing yeah <laughs> so when the writing is so amazing and across the board throughout the game and, and, and people just have these unique play and they are unique player experiences um it's just magical to be part of that so yeah I've had a good Aww. run I had a great time while it lasted <laughs> Thank you for loving writers also. Oh, man, Thank anytime. You. But, you know, look, I've worked with, you know, Neil Gaiman, uh, Douglas Adams. I was, he, he'd already died. I was a huge fan of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So I, I came in through literature. And it's only later where I discovered that the embodiment of it through theatre, through that, that live um, role play, I suppose, was, was how I was really engaging with the medium. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This has been... A transformative conversation for me. Bless you. I hope I I, have made, I loved it. Thank you. I I feel like we could go for a whole nother hour. Yeah, I'm going to stop now because I've already 
yeah, I've already gone off on Keep a few going. tangents. It was like, yeah, oh, unions. You didn't know about unions, right? No, How long no, you got? no. This is this yeah. is amazing. I feel like I, I feel like I have a better understanding of like what's going on in um, what's going on in the UK. Again, as an American-based writer, who's yeah. I mean, Cal- I barely leave California. I'm in you know San Francisco. Um, it's it's we don't get a lot of of touch points except for yeah. our conferences like these with our yeah, counterparts and, all over the and world. Online maybe like a Discord or two that yeah. Yeah, a couple of Discords. But now I am more determined than ever to go smash some gatekeepers. Let's do it. Let's do it together. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to end. Thank show. you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>